Welcome to an introduction to biomes and climatographs. So this is the biosphere, right? We remember our four spheres of the earth, bio, hydro, litho, and atmosphere. And this is the part of earth that supports life, right? And scattered throughout the biosphere is a wide range of geographic areas that we call biomes. And each has its own unique climate, landforms, and biodiversity. Each biome is defined by two sets of characteristics. We have our abiotic factors, the non-living factors like soil and rainfall, and then biotic factors, which are living factors, species of decomposers, producers, consumers. Just a review. So abiotic influences on an ecosystem. The two most significant abiotic factors that influence life in a biome are average temperature and precipitation. Temperature and precipitation are very heavily influenced by latitude. That's the distance from the equator, either north or south of the equator, measured in degrees. As the latitude of an ecosystem increases, the average temperature tends to decrease. Latitude is not the only factor influencing climate. Newfoundland, Canada, so that's up here. Here's Maine, New Brunswick, New York's way down there. So Newfoundland and Labrador. And then Northern France over here are both close to the 50 degree north latitude line, yet have very different climates. The same latitude in Newfoundland, Canada will have an average January temperature of 12 degrees while it'll be 37 degrees Fahrenheit in Rouen, France. Big difference. Altitude is the elevation above sea level. As altitude increases, average temperature decreases. This should sound a lot like latitude. Biomes located near a large body of water often have greater precipitation levels and more moderate or not extreme temperatures. Water gains and loss loses heat much more slowly than air. The nearby water evaporates and fuels incoming storm systems. So water is a regulator of temperature. The presence of mountains also has a major influence on the distribution of precipitation, creating what we call a rain shadow effect. As warm, moist air travels up a mountain range, the air cools due to altitude and moisture condenses. This is how we form clouds. So we have the windward side. So this is a side that air is coming towards. So we have this wind coming off of the ocean and it gets pushed up the mountains and it air cools and condenses and forms clouds. And then as it comes back down the other side, it's lost all of its moisture. So the windward side gets more precipitation than the leeward side. The rain shadow effect caused by the Cascade Mountain Range in Washington State creates the climate divide between the moist temperate rainforests and the high deserts of Oregon. Climatographs. So this is where we're going to have to do some practice. Ecologists use a combination line and bar graph called a climatograph to show trends in temperature and precipitation. The average monthly precipitation for the area is displayed as a bar graph. The average monthly temperature is displayed as a line graph. 